Hi guys, I um, hope you can hear me over the noise of the chainsaw, they're doing a bit of woodwork out the back there. Um, I had a delivery from Vivor this morning um, and it was very, very heavy. Uh, it was so heavy my wife couldn't lift it in, the delivery driver had to take it in for her. Um, and it's a rotary table. Now, uh, Vivor got on to me oh, about a week ago and said, would I be interested in reviewing any of their tools? And they suggested a few things like um, welders and anvils and various stuff. As I've got all those, I thought I'd fancy reviewing something that I actually haven't got that could be quite useful. So when they suggested a rotary table, I thought, yeah, great, there's a few jobs in the past that I've wanted one for, but obviously can't justify for one little job. So anyway, they sent it to me. It was very, very quick. Um, it arrived in less than 24 hours after me saying yes, I'd have it. Um, so let's take a look at it. I'm going to do the rest of it with a voiceover so you don't get distracted by the, the chainsaws. Right, so this is how it turned up. Nice big chunky box. It's an HV8, which is meaning it's um, 8 inch, which I didn't realise at the time. It's a bit big for what I wanted, and it's 30 kilos. It's a monster. It's a horizontal and vertical. Now I must say I'm not an engineer. So this review is just from my perspective knowing what I like, what I know is good and bad and what it would do for me. You get your instructions and parts list which isn't brilliant. Um, it's obviously been scaled down from a, a something larger because if you look in here the the drawings are so small and the um, numbering and lettering on it you can't tell what's what but they've tried and it's some sort of chinglish so um, they've tried that's all you can say it's also come with this test report which obviously means a lot more to some engineering types than it does to me um, so yeah I'm no engineer all I'm gonna do is say how I feel it's been put together, whether it would do the job or not. It came in this polystyrene all the way from China. Let's have a look at it. There it is. And it's a chunky beast. It's all quite sort of clunky, which is to be expected from a lower end of the market so, uh, sort of um, piece. These came with it. So you can line them up with your existing tracks on your mill or whatever you're going to put it on. There's some for underneath as well. It didn't come with any T-slots which I suppose is to be expected. Um, let's have a quick look around it. The graduations are nicely marked. There is a little bit of backlash, but that is to be expected on any of machines, and that's why you always should turn in one direction, which is something I do know. You can undo it here, turn that to off, and that frees up the wheel completely, so you can sort of set it to wherever you want it. And then you can click it back up, tighten it back up, and there is some sort of little adjustment there. I'm not quite sure what that one's for, a tiny little screw in there. What I did notice though, which to my eye is off-putting, is that pointer isn't straight. Let me see if I can straighten that up before I finish this video. But as I say, all the markings, the graduations are all nice. These locks work very well. Um, but that was damaged, this one. It's obviously been hit uh, and it wouldn't work at all. It was it was locked. Something had obviously hit it here and bent the, um, the thread. So I managed to unscrew the handle, this handle, and with a, a bar I managed to get the other thing out, um, put some nuts on it, and I've hit it with a hammer and straightened it. So it's now actually working. These grooves are nicely machined in which will help you aligning things up that's a morse taper three in the middle um, handy for if you're using it vertically and you want to do something between centers um, 
Yeah, it all moves quite nicely. There is a tiny little tight spot when you turn it. It's not much, it's hardly noticeable, but I thought I'd mention it. Um, whether that's something that's damaged or whether it's just a bit tight, I don't know. I'm guessing it will wear in with use, so I'm not too worried about that. Graduations are so nicely marked. Easy to set accurately. I probably will never use the minutes and seconds, but they're there for the, those of you that will. And they're easy, as I say, easy to read. The casting is pretty nice casting. It's been machined up quite nicely. I was hoping to use it on my mill. But unfortunately, it's too big to go on where the tool post normally goes. I can't get a fixing, so I might make a base plate to adapt it onto there because that has a collet chuck, which would work much better, whereas this doesn't. And this is what I'm going to use it on for today's little demonstration, just to see how it works. Let's get it up there. See if I can do it without giving myself a hernia and without dropping it because it is a big old beast. There we go. Now I have one little bugbear which happens with a lot of these rotary tables. This wheel, it's set down and I guess it has to be but you can't push it onto the table so I'm going to have to um, clamp it down because the slots don't line up so I should just clamp it down with these um, which will be good enough for, for what I need right to line it up I'm not going to use a dial gauge which I do have I'm not that much of a heathen but I made up this little plug it goes into the um, chuck obviously um, and this is a taper which fits in the Morse taper in the thing which I did on my little lathe and hopefully that will line it up absolutely perfectly enough for me I won't need it to be spot on done with the dial gauge just checking that that's going around relatively square so all I'm going to do drop it down into the taper Till it's snug, lock that off, and then now I can tighten that down with these clamps. Lock it off where I need it. So the sort of jobs I'm going to use or use it for are the sort that you couldn't justify to go out and buy one um, because they're, you know nothing jobs but without one life is much more difficult you know five minutes doing um, setting this up will save me like a couple of hours of laying out a, a piece on a you know doing it with mass and dividers and things so there we go that will be amply good enough for what I need so I don't see any other reason to uh, muck about with um, dial gauges. So I haven't got a job for it at the moment specifically but I might want to use this to make a tyre hammer with and I'd like to put a ring of um, bolt holes to attach it to the tyre. Now I scribed roughly the circumference that I want so I'm just going to put that up here with a piece of sacrificial um, material underneath an old flange, I've got dozens of these. Then we'll line that up on top. I'm just going through the motions because I haven't got any hold down, so um, I'll have to make some or get some more because I sold the whole set thinking I'd never use them, but obviously now I will. Um, so we're just going to go through the motions. So I'm going to set my centre drill down on the circumference that I've roughly scribed then lock off the arm so that that's at the radius that I want 
then we'll start her up. Mm, wrong way. And then we're going to spot them. Obviously, I've set the uh, table to zero. Then we're going to do, it's just for argument's sake, say 60 degrees. That's easy enough to find. Spot it again. Obviously, I'm not spotting them as um, hard as I would do if, they, if the whole job was clamped down. I'm just going through the motions to show you how easy it is to do. This handle's nice and positive. I so say if it was a more expensive machine, the handle might be uh, lighter weight and rounded rather than square and perhaps even chromed with a little chrome handle. And same with the uh, lockdowns, they might be slimmer, chromed, rounded. But it does the job, you know. And for the price, which I shall put in the description, because off the top of my head I can't remember what it was, but I will write it down and put the links to it. You can either go via my Amazon links, which means I get a bit of a kickback, or you can go direct. Either way, it's the same price, but through my links I get a little bonus. And I say little, it is little, but it all helps. And there we go, I think that was the last one. And considering that wasn't tied down or anything, that's pretty accurate. That's come spot on the, uh, the, the first hole. So I'm pleased with that. I would change it into the drill, put it back in and probably lock it in between each hole. And hopefully, just to make sure there's no movement, and hopefully that will work a treat. So there you go. That's the sort of job I would be using it for. I'm going to have to make myself some, or as I say, buy some more clamps and things, but that's no problem. Other than that, it seems like a winner. I also have this old chuck kicking about, which I might make a uh, base plate to adapt to it, because that would be ideal for um, round if it's vertical or even holding jobs like I've just done but slightly smaller ones wouldn't have to go through the rigmarole of setting it all up so I might do that as well so overall impressions I like it you see I've straightened up the uh, the indicator I couldn't bear that being out of line but it's basically one of the allen keys wasn't done up so I just straightened all that up the case casting's nice. It's it's solid. It's chunky. I don't think it's going to break in a hurry. Put it that way. Um, yeah, I like it for a home hobby workshop or for someone like me that's not going to put it to its full potential in an engineering environment. It's marvellous. Absolutely ticks all the boxes. So I would certainly recommend it for that. I say the the engineers out there might poo poo it a little bit, but I'm very pleased with it. So thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you on the next one.